At first glance, Shelbyville is your typical sleepy southern town. It's nestled in Middle Tennessee, where the walking horse is king. There's Main Street, the local sheriff, a movie theater. It's all very Mayberry, except for one big difference, the recent arrival of hundreds of Somali Muslims. Shelbyville, Tennessee is about an hour's drive from Nashville, in the heart of the Bible Belt. This is small town USA, and like many Americans, People here knew little about Somalia other than the 1993 Black Hawk Down incident, in which 18 U.S. servicemen were killed while battling Islamic jihadists and warlords in the Somali capital of Mogadishu. So when hundreds of Somalis began turning up here in Shelbyville, many of them dressed in traditional Islamic garb, locals quickly took notice. They've had an impact here. Unfortunately, it's not been a good impact. Local columnist Brian Mosley won an award from the Associated Press for a series of articles he wrote about Shelbyville Somalis. I found that there was just an enormous culture clash going on here. Um, the uh, Somalis were, according to many of the people I've talked to here, were being very, very rude and considerate, being very demanding. Uh, they would go into stores and uh, haggle over prices. Their culture is totally alien to anything that uh, the folks here are used to. The problems extend to local schools, where some Somali students won't talk to female administrators. There's also been issues with local law enforcement. And I'm not really sure if that's because of their experiences with the police in their country, or if that's just the way their culture is. Shelbyville is home to about 17,000 people. The town's Somali population is estimated between 400 and 1,000. Mosley says the Somalis have isolated themselves from the rest of the community. We're talking about people that have not had any experience uh, with Western civilization. They don't know the language. Uh, things like running water are a miracle to some of these folks. Abdurazak Hassan is director of the Somali Community Center in nearby Nashville. He says the state of Tennessee has no programs to help immigrants integrate into their new surroundings. They come and the only thing they can do is to go to work from work to, to apartment, they're totally isolated, you know, and there's no interaction between them and the, and the locals. He says some have even expressed a desire to return to Somalia. A lot of them face eviction, like, you know, they put in an apartment complex that costs $600 a month, and they can't, they can't get a job that, that gives them that much money. So how did so many Somalis end up in rural Shelbyville? The answer can be complicated. The State Department helps resettle refugees from war-torn countries like Somalia here in the United States. The resettlement project is one part of a taxpayer-funded refugee aid program with a billion-dollar budget. Immigrants are chosen from U.N. refugee camps. The selected refugees then undergo a few days of cultural orientation and are on their way to America. The U.S. takes in more refugees than any other country, with a cap of about 80,000 this year. What we do is we look at the most vulnerable groups of refugees. Todd Pierce works for the State Department's Bureau of Population, Refugees and Migration. He says the resettlement program helps America's image in the eyes of the world. It's one of the best facets of, of America is that we're a very generous, hospitable country. And this is something that's been bipartisan for decades now. We've brought people in. We look at Africa, we look at the Middle East, we look at, at Southeast Asia. More than 150,000 Somalis now live in the United States, most in larger cities like Minneapolis, Nashville, and Seattle. Gang activity has been a major concern, and according to government reports, at least a dozen young Somali Americans have returned home to join Islamic terrorist groups. The FBI is conducting investigations in several cities with large Somali populations. Pierce says the government tries to shut any potential troublemakers out of the program. We work closely with Department of Homeland Security to make sure that we vet people coming here, especially since 9-11, it's very important. After a few months in their settlement cities, the refugees are free to move around the country. Somalis in other cities were drawn to Shelbyville by the jobs offered at the local Tyson chicken plant. The plant came under fire from the Justice Department in 2001 for hiring illegal Hispanic immigrants. The large influx of Somalis has only added to locals' frustration with the plant and the government. We've had three major industries shut down here. Uh, Seven to 800 people have lost their jobs. They're trying to find anything they can. And then, as they see it, 
the government is shipping people from overseas to come here and take their jobs. Despite locals' continued complaints about Tyson's hiring practices, the company says it's doing things by the book. Tyson reps say they're simply following federal employment guidelines and that most of their employees are local residents. The Tyson plant generated national controversy last fall when it dropped Labor Day as a paid holiday in favor of the Muslim holiday Eid al Fitr. The decision was later reversed, but longtime local residents say the incident was symbolic of the larger changes taking place in Shelbyville, changes they're coping with as best they can. We're probably as cultural diversified as any small town in America, I would think. Uh, and it's been a lot of change, but I think most people pretty much take it in stride and just keep keep going along. We're from Shelbyville, Tennessee. Eric Stackelbeck, CBN News.